Good day, my name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and welcome back to chemistry videos. We are going to talk about statistics though today, so let's get started. Our statistical conversation is going to talk about types of error, specifically the statistical types of error that deal with the null hypothesis. So what kinds of error are there? There's type 1 error and there's type 2 error. All right, so what is type 1 error? Type 1 error is when you reject the null hypothesis when it was true. All right, well, what is type 2 error then? Type 2 error must be the opposite, which is failing to reject the null when it was false. And I am super squeaky, I apologize about that. I'll get another blue. So what are we talking about here? Well, usually when you talk about these kinds of errors, you're talking about um, errors that you have done within hypothesis testing. And the way it usually looks is something like this. You get some kind of decision block here. All right, what are the axes on this? Well, you have decision, whatever the decision is here, right? So you can either reject the null or fail to reject the null. And on the top here, you could say the null is true or the null is false. Those are kind of the possibilities, right? Because when we make decisions in hypothesis testing, we're making them about the null. We are not making them about the alternative hypothesis. Um, statisticians would not really ever say the alternative hypothesis is true or false. Um, we would only talk about the null. Okay, so let's talk about what happens here. If you reject the null and the null is actually true, that's what we just said type one error is. Right? So this is type 1 error. Okay. What this is given by is it's given by alpha, right? The probability of getting type 1 error is given by alpha, and that's the significance level. Significance level. I didn't quite leave enough room for a significance level. Okay. So when you're talking about type 1 error, you're talking about that significance level that we use the p-value against if we're doing p-values at all. Um, but it basically gives us a sense of kind of the confidence intervals that we're looking at, right? So we're talking about 90% in terms of confidence intervals, 95% or 99%. If you reject the null and the null is false, then you did it right. <laughs> that was correct. Woohoo! Love it when you're correct. And the probability of this happening, right? The probability of this occurring is equal to 1 minus alpha. Okay. All right, let's talk about the bottom part. We'll do that in a different color. If you reject, uh, or if you fail to reject the null and the null was true, then you also did it correct. Right? Failing to reject the null is the same thing as saying you kept the null. <laughs> so you either reject the null or you keep the null. That's what you're going to go with. And here, this is still correct, which is awesome. If that's correct, then the probability of getting this is 1 minus beta. Now, why is it beta? Well, because if you fail to reject the null, but the null is false, that's type 2 error. And type 2 error is given by beta. The probability of getting type 2 error is given by beta. This 1 minus beta is actually 
thought of as a different kind of thing, right? So it actually has its own moment, and that's called the power of the test. What is the power of the test? The power of the test is also known as the sensitivity. It's the ability to detect an effect if the effect actually exists. So it's the ability of a test to detect an effect. Let me write that out. Uh, uh, oh. Well, I'll write that out. Um, ability of your statistical test, whatever that is, to detect an effect if an effect is present. Okay. That's kind of cool, right? So we want the ability to, if there's an effect, if we do a uh, uh, statistical test, we set up an experiment where we have a control and an, an experimental group, and we actually do a statistical test, we do, uh, we actually manipulate that um, independent variable so that we can see an effect in the de dependent variable, um, and it, an effect is actually present, then we would like to be able to detect that. <laughs> We'd like to be able to say, hey, there is actually something that happened, okay? So that's what the power of the test is, and that's a pretty cool idea, right? So that is giving the idea that um, our test works, more or less, okay? So if you're looking at all of these different kinds of, te of errors and all of the different kinds of statistical tests, pretty much the types of error are the same. Okay, there's also something called type 3 error, and that happens anytime you expand these two, right? So that's kind of the other error bin that people put statistical errors into, okay? If it's an expansion of these kinds of errors. All right, and that's about it for error. If you uh, will join me next time, I will bid you adieu for this time. <laughs>